Has it ever happened that when you were very small in your childhood you have been insulted very badly? Has it happened that uh, do you still that you still remember that and you still carry that hate or that uh, poison inside of you? Or maybe in any time of your life when you were young or when you were in your mid 30s, 40s or in your teens, any time of your life you have been insulted very badly. Uh, publicly or maybe even privately doesn't matter but has it happened to you that you are not able to forget the things that were done to you uh, if yes then you are in the right place because today we are here with the another episode of the exotic podcast where we have his grace gorang darshan prabhu with us and today he will enlighten us on how to deal with hatred so if you have terrible hatred towards somebody if somebody did something to you which you are not able to forget nor you are able to forgive that person and you are still carrying that inside your heart then what should you do what should be your course of action should you just do nothing or do something or maybe there is something totally different that you should do which is beyond the materialistic realm and law of karma and that's exactly what we are going to discuss today uh, through the story of Dhruva Maharaj uh, who was a five year old boy once upon a time and uh, he will be, um, Prabhuji will today share some insights about him and how did he deal with hatred alright. So as you can see uh, Prabhuji is a disciple of His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj and he is the author and dean of uh, the Bhaktivedanta Vidya Peet and currently he is staying in Gorodhaniko village in Maharashtra India and he has a master's degree and he is now a monk since 2019, uh, 2009 sorry and uh, he has written over 35 books and more than uh, 2 lakh copies have already been sold and he has countless hours of spiritual discourses across various platforms and TEDx and his primary focus is on teaching the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam and you know, similar scriptures like the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and to make them accessible and understandable for all of us all right so uh, if you are new to the channel then don't forget to subscribe and uh, please like the video and send in your blessings to Prabhuji and to visit his website and his books and other things you can see the link in the description section all right so i hope you like this podcast and have a good time thank you Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the exotic podcast. Today I am very happy and delighted to have a very special guest whose introduction you might have already heard. His Grace Gorang Darshan Prabhu, please welcome to the exotic podcast and uh, today he will enlighten us on a very 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 special topic which you might have also heard in the introduction which is you know if you are very badly insulted or you have been downgraded or denigrated by somebody and you want to take revenge and you are wondering what you should do what would be the best course of action should you go and take revenge should you purify yourself should you go to god should you uh, chant some mantras or <laughs> should you just go to the himalayas and meditate and do nothing <laughs> so <laughs> or should you let karma do uh, and take revenge from your side or you should or you should just forget about it what should you do so this is where the story of dhuva maharaj comes in and we have the perfect speaker today so prabhuji the stage is all yours Hare Krishna. yeah thank you uh Babhajit prabhu for having me on your podcast and thank you for asking such a relevant question, practical question. Yes, as you said, Dharva Maharaj's story begins with uh, being insulted by his stepmother. Oh. Dharva's father was Uttanapad and he had two wives, Suruchi and Suniti and he was more attached to his younger wife Suruchi and he would be, he was neglecting Suniti. Mm. Even the names were also very relevant here. <laughs> it's relevant to uh, discuss the meanings of the names. Ruchi means taste. Okay. Niti means morality. Niti, okay, yes. Suruchi was the favorite of Uttanapad. Suniti was not the favorite. Hmm. Niti means morality. Generally, uh, morals, principles, ethics, values, ideals, uh, they are not that palatable to an average human being. 
Yes, correct. That ruchi taste, what gives immediate pleasure to yes. us, that <laughs> excites the person more. Right. So, Anupad representing the mentality of an average human being, he is more excited to spend time with Suruchi than even Suniti. Mm. All the both are wives. Uh, Suniti is also no less. She is uh, uh, very beautiful, uh, coming from a respectable family. She yes. is a great queen and she is uh, endowed with good character. But Correct. for whatever reason, all the background incidents were not uh, so much elaborated. Somehow, Uttanapad was more attached to Suruchi. Mm. So, one day, Suniti's son Dhruva saw Uttanapad sitting on the throne. Yes. Which next to him and on Uttanpath's lap was Suruchi's son Uttam. Mm. So seeing his younger stepbrother sitting on father's lap, Dhruva also developed an innocent desire fitting to his position as a small child. Uh, he developed a sincere desire, simple desire to go and sit on father's lap. Right. Interestingly, father did not welcome him. <laughs> then Suruchi started insulting Dhruva. He, she said, you are not qualified to sit on father's lap. Hmm. Yes, you are also the son of uh, the, the king, Uttanapad. Hmm. Just being the son of the king is not a sufficient qualification to sit on your lap. <laughs> Be my son also. Yeah, yeah, yes. We are not fortunate enough to sit on father's lap because you are the son of a mother, a queen, who is not the favorite of the king. As a small child, you don't understand the difference between me and your mother. Yeah. And both are my father's wives, both are queens, but they are, we both are different. The childhood innocence of Dhruva did not see the difference between Suruchi and Suniti much. Both are like motherly figures. Yes, yes, yes. Arrogance of Suruchi pointed out the difference between herself and Suniti in front of this five-year-old boy Dhruva. Hmm. She even insulted him by saying that your current life is waste. Because in this life, you cannot sit on father's lap. Definitely, you can never dream of sitting on father's throne also. Oh, okay. You won't get the kingdom. Okay. And uh, you also give some background of Uttanapad, like who was he and just for the audience, if they are not aware of. Okay. Uttanapad was the son of Swayam Bhava Manu. Mm. And Manu was the son of Lord Brahma. Yes. And Brahma was the son of Vishnu. <laughs> so, <laughs> coming in the lineage of Vishnu, just a couple of generations in between. Actually, he's connected yes. to Vishnu. Yeah, three, four <laughs> generations. Even in such great families, uh, sometimes there could be some conflicts. Mm. So, anyways, Manu is the father of mankind. He's supposed yeah. to be an ideal human being. But mm. in his own family, uh, directly in the family of his own son, Uttanapad, these unpleasant things are happening. Mm. Of course, later Manu will come and correct Dhruva. That's a very long story. Yeah. But current context, let's see. Let's focus on how Suruchi uh, chastised and scolded and insulted uh, Dhruva. Mm. It's a long story. But to focus on the particular question that you have asked, what should be our response to insults? That's your, essentially, that's your question, right? <laughs> how should we react? <laughs> Should we take uh, revenge? Should we hold grudges? Should we just keep quiet? Should we tolerate? Should we be humble? Or should we retaliate? And if we retaliate, uh, how intense it should be? Should we should we verbally respond to it or physically respond to it? <laughs> let's yeah. let's analyze the situation. Let's see what Dhruva did first. Hmm. Dhruva must understand Dhruva's situation. He's a five-year-old child. Correct. He's a mature adult. He's a five-year-old boy. Uh, when Suniti, when Suruchi said that you are not qualified to sit on father's lap, this Dhruva was expecting that, let my father speak something. Yes. When my stepmother is like really attacking me verbally in this way and insulting me, at least father should support me. But Uttarapad was completely silent. When you have a responsibility and authority to protect a dependent and if you do, ah. still don't take any action, then that is mere irresponsibility. You are not you are not acting according to the position which you are placed in. 
So Tanpaya failed as a good father, failed as a good husband, failed as a good king also. Yeah, all as a good king supposed to treat all citizens equally, but he did not. As a as a husband, he's supposed to treat both of his wives equally, he could not. Hmm. And father is supposed to treat both his sons equally, but he could not. Ah, okay. All the three faces he failed. Mm -hmm. Why did he fail? Because of undue attachment, hmm. undue obligations. When we are unreasonably attached to somebody or something, that will make us weaker than ourselves. Hmm. Okay. Tanpal is a strong king. Yeah. And if we order Suruchi, don't don't talk like this in front of this little child. Who would stop him? Yeah. Because he became so attached to her, he did not have the heart to displease her. If I stop her, she will be displeased. Yeah. Okay. So, in Uttanpad's attempt not to displease Suruchi, he has displeased his son, Dhruva. Oh, he, went, okay. he had a choice. Whom mm. should I please? Dhruva or Suruchi? He chose Suruchi. Mm -hmm. okay. Really speaking, we should we should support people who are reasonable and we should just disapprove the deeds of people who are unreasonable. Correct. But Tanpad did the opposite here mm -hmm. because of attachment. Mm -hmm. When we are overly attached to some people, uh, then we will become weaker than ourselves. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Suruchi insulted him and she said that, my dear child, Dhruva, if at all if you desire to sit on your father's lap, yeah. You worship Lord Vishnu hmm. and in response to your worship Lord Vishnu will give you a boon hmm. by the power of Lord Vishnu's boon in your next birth you can take uh, birth in my womb hmm. take birth from my womb then you will be qualified to sit on father's lap indirectly she told you die better in this life you, won't, you will never be able to sit on your father's lap better you die take your next birth as my son then you can sit yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Tanpada is not doing anything. Dhruva was thoroughly disappointed. Not only disappointed, he was devastated. Yes, 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 correct. Uh, and as an immature five-year-old child, ignorant, innocent child, he became disappointed and he went to his mother. Hmm. He went running towards his mother, Suniti. He was hissing like a snake. When you trample a snake with your foot, a uh, snake will become very angry. That's how yes. Dhruva became. Because mm. Dhruva, as well, although he was a child, he was a Kshatriya child. Yeah. Okay, Kshatriyas by nature have a lot of um, energy and uh, anger uh, and passion. Yes. Right? They can't tolerate insults so much. So, Dhruva Maharaj developed some negative feelings revengeful attitude towards stepmother Suruji. Mm. He also became envious of Uttan, envious of Uttama, his stepbrother, who was sitting on his father's lap. Ah, okay. Envious. Correct. Mm -hmm. He became envious of his stepbrother. Yeah. He became revengeful towards uh, his stepmother. Mm -hmm. So that is from Dhruva's perspective. Yes. So with these feelings overwhelming his heart, Dhruva went to his mother Suniti. Mm. You know what Suniti said? The first thing that Suniti spoke was, my dear child, don't desire harm for anyone. Mm. If they have harmed you, you should not desire harm for them. Yes. That is my advice. So, this is from Suniti's perspective. Mm -hmm. You ask me, how should we respond to insults? <laughs> my answer is, We'll respond to insults depending on our own mental disposition, our own realizations, our own maturity. Okay. Everybody will not give a similar kind of response. Yeah. And there's a no, um, rule book that says this is this should be your response. Hmm. Okay. And really people respond according to their mentality, their consciousness, their realization, uh, their preference. So here is Suniti, who's on the other extreme. She said, oh, uh, Dhruva, Although Suruchi has insulted you, you should not contemplate harm for her. You should give up all your uh, negative thoughts towards her. You should give up your revengeful attitude towards her. That's what she said. And second point she said was, please understand that whenever you receive insults or even honor, praise, happiness, distress, success, failure, 
whenever you receive all kinds of mixed uh, experiences in your life, please understand that they are results of your own deeds. Mm. Good deeds, you'll get good results. When you do bad deeds, you'll get bad results. Mm. Okay. Good results can be in the form of success. Bad results can be in the form of failure. Honor, dishonor. Respect, disrespect. Mm. Insult, praise. Mm. <laughs> Criticism. So like that, you'll, you'll encounter all kinds of responses, all kinds of experiences and treatments from people based on your own past activities. Mm. So which is just uh, an instrument of your karma. Okay. You deserve this insult because of your own past misdeeds and Suruchi is just delivering that experience to you mm, okay. as a postman kind of thing. Okay. And Prabhuji, is there any uh, explanation like in the scriptures whenever there is a particular incident where somebody is insulted or humiliated or defeated, then... Many times the scriptures say, okay, in past life he did this or she did this and then this. So is there any explanation for this for Dhruva Maharaj? Uh, that means you are asking about a particular... I mean, uh, no, exactly... like, uh, like Suruch, uh, Suniti said that, you know, this is happening because of your past life bad deeds. <laughs> you got insulted. So is there any reference? I was just curious to know that why he was insulted like this, like from his previous lifetime. Is there any reference or there is no reference? Uh, uh, in Dhruva's case, at least within my limited scriptural reading, uh, I didn't read about an incident where Dhruva did a mistake okay. which caused this insult in this life now. Okay. But it's a principle that yeah. is applied yes. uh, to our people. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes... Actual incident is quoted. Sometimes it's not quoted. Oh yes, always yes, yes. So that's how a devotee reconciles. That right. yes, if whatever pleasant or unpleasant situations I'm placing, I am facing in my life are results of my own past mistakes. They just understand and reconcile like that. Although they try to externally address the situation as much as ah. humanly possible. Correct. Correct. So, Suri Suniti took the other extreme. Don't desire harm. And third thing she said was, first thing was, don't desire harm for Suruchi. Second thing was, understand that it's a result of your own past mistakes. Third thing is, whatever desire you have, you please worship Lord Vishnu. You want to sit on father's lap, father's throne, or any other desire that you have, you please worship Lord Vishnu. And this is told by Suruchi. What she said is correct. Mm. He ignored all the abusive, insulting words spoken by Suruchi mm. and she focused only on that one good thing she said, worship Lord Vishnu. Correct, correct, correct. They're essence seekers. We focus on the essence. We focus on that which is meaningful in the speech of even an envious person. Ah, an envious okay. person may speak so many things. Mm -hmm. uh, and a wise person will ignore all the negative stuff that he has spoken and takes, if there is anything positive, anything useful, anything meaningful, anything practical, he will just pick up that only. Um, That's what Suniti is. So these are two extremes. So they responded to this insult in this ways. Mm -hmm. Suniti did not develop any grudge or negativity or hatred or envy towards Suruchi. And Dhruva... Even after hearing all this good counsel given by Suniti Mata, still he developed a lot of grudge and envy at ah. uh, Uttam and uh, Suruchi. So she said three things, right? First two things did not enter the head of Dhruva. <laughs> and the third thing entered. <laughs> I should worship Lord Vishnu to fulfill anything, any desire. I want to take revenge on my stepmother. Let me worship Lord Vishnu. I want mm. to sit on my father's lap. Let me worship Lord Vishnu. I mm. want to sit on my father's throne. Let me worship Lord Vishnu. Actually, I want to sit in a position which is superior to my great-grandfather Brahma also. Therefore, I must worship Lord Vishnu. With that desire, he left. And this, I always had a doubt. Like when he says, I want a position greater than my great-grandfather Brahma Ji. Like, because I'm sure he would be much more aware than all of us, you know, who is Brahma Ji. So, when he says, I want a position greater than Brahmaji, so is he not indirectly kind of saying, I want to become almost like God because <laughs> above Brahma there is Vishnu and there is nobody else. <laughs> yeah, correct. He, his ambition is like that. He is overly ambitious. <laughs> because he's a five-year-old child, right? Yeah, yeah. 
everything is taken uh, uh, without any surprise or astonishment. Five year old child, he doesn't know much. Uh, ah, although he said that he must be more aware than us. Yeah, yeah. He is. Oh, he yeah. Is yeah. More correct. innocent than you. <laughs> uh, correct, 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 correct. And more ambitious because it's a Kshatriya. Ah, okay. Childish innocence and Kshatriya spirit. Deadly combination. And an insult here. <laughs> okay, I see. Uh, experience of insult and Kshatriya spirit plus childish innocence. And a mm. lot of determination. So all, all three, four things just uh, combined together. Therefore, he became ambitious. Okay. To become Super ambitious. ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> Super ambitious. Great determination. Okay. Uh, so now okay. let's come to our uh, main question of how should we respond? Mm. I described Dhruva's response. Yeah. He maintained grudge. He maintained negativity. He was envious. He wanted to prove himself. He became very ambitious. He became very passionate. Mm -hmm. He became very determined. And on the other hand, Suniti, she was very forgiving. She was very tolerant. She was very humble and devoted. Definitely, Suniti was also pained at heart. Oh. When a child is insulted by somebody, definitely mother will feel bad, right? Correct, correct. The father is neglecting the son. What will be the emotion of the mother? Definitely, mother Suniti was feeling very uncomfortable. But still, she is a Vaishnavi. She is a great devotee. Therefore, she was very uh, calm and composed and tolerant and sober and patiently waiting for an appropriate time to come where uh, her husband will will continue to will will resume his natural uh, position as a father and as a husband and treat Dhruva and Suniti nicely. She mm -hmm. was waiting for. Mm -hmm. So she exhibited tolerance. Mm. And Dhruva exhibited intolerance. Oh, okay. Okay. Tolerance. And our response can be anywhere between these two points. Okay. These are two extremes and we were uh, somewhere in between. Dhruva and Sunita are in two extremes. Too much tolerance and no tolerance at all. Oh. Forgiveness is here and uh, envy and grudge and revengeful attitude is here. Oh, okay. Suggesting, accommodating, uh, being calm and composed. That is Suniti. Mm. And Dhruva so, uh, was very ambitious and all. Mm. But our response can be anywhere between these two responses, uh, depending on the situation, depending mm. on who's insulting, and depending on how severe was the insult. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes people may say, hey, I don't do this. We may consider it as an insult. How can he say this to me? Mm -hmm. You must have said it in a friendly way. Yeah, yeah yes, yes, yes. Uh, I would say, First, let us understand and analyze the emotions of other person. Mm. Empathize with them. Mm. Apparently, they must have insulted us, either verbally or physically. Uh, they must have pushed us or they must have said something. Uh, they may become a little angry. Probably, they become angry in public. Mm. But try to think from their perspective. Here, mm. Suruj is clearly very haughty and very proud and harsh. She is clearly at wrong. Clearly, at she is, she did a mistake. But in the case of um, an average human being, when he or she experiences some insult, it's not necessary that the other person who happened to insult is really a villain. Oh, okay. You may not have the nature like Suruchi. Yeah. It could be a circumstantial emotional outburst of that person. Mm. Okay. Maybe they must have been frustrated. Because of something. Maybe yeah. it helped that you went and asked something. That, hey, I will not do anything now. Go, go, go away. <laughs> so they become a little irritated because their health is poor. Yeah. So we try to empathize with the other person. Mm, okay. I, my spiritual master said that never take the words of an angry person so seriously. Oh, okay. Because an angry person generally speaks more than what he means. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yes. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Even when we are angry, we say some things and when we calm down after a while, after a few minutes or after maybe one or two days, we'll go and tell them, actually, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I just, in anger, I just said something. Please don't take it seriously. We say that. Even we can observe and analyze uh, our own speech when we are angry. Mm. We generally speak in a more uh, aggressive tone. Mm. We don't mean it. So our feeling of remorse or disappointment or resentment may be this much, 
but when it comes into words it uh, it becomes uh, it takes up an exaggerated shape yeah, yeah, yeah. inflated mm. same is the case with others also when others become angry they speak very angry words maybe inside they are not that angry but because of that momentary outburst emotional outburst they said something more than what they meant mm. so we should empathize with them is the fighting with them yes 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 so when two people come together and this person said something unpleasant and if this person has tolerance then the conflict can be resolved easily mm. but if this person also speak something more that will instigate this person to speak something more yeah yeah and yeah provoke this person to speak even more harshly <laughs> and that will uh, inspire this person to speak even much greater abusive words so that's the conflict will increase only correct correct somebody speaking some insulting words just pause reflect and empathize with the other person think from their side at least keep quiet for a while then you start speaking mm. let me tell you one little story <laughs> one oh. small story huh? not not such a long story like dhruva once <laughs> there was a woman mm -hmm. uh, in a village she is known to be very angry she would just get annoyed for every small thing uh, and her home is always having some shouting and all that all the members of the family also became very Uh, frustrated with her because she is very angry and she also realizes even for small small things i am getting very angry i need to control i want to control but i am unable to control i get very irritated yes. so once uh, a saint came to that area okay and she went and asked can you please uh, give me some tips to control anger i become very annoyed and very angry for small small things also please help me control my anger Okay. And saint said, "I have a special medicine for you. You just accept this medicine." Uh, he he just gave a uh, little bottle. Actually, this is rather good gel. Oh. <laughs> so he just gave a medicine. Please take this medicine. Whenever you become angry, whenever you feel little angry and annoyed or or frustrated, you feel like shouting at people. Just take four drops of this medicine mm. in your mouth, and then. don't open your mouth 10 minutes you should just allow the medicine to work in your body okay and after a few days you will understand how okay. uh, how your anger will be controlled okay and she started following it whenever she would become little annoyed with something she immediately immediately she will remember the medicine she will take four drops and then keep her mouth closed for next 10 minutes then automatically anger is subsided then after a week or two weeks she went back to the saint and said your medicine worked wonders <laughs> you have given such a effective medicine excellent medicine <laughs> so you please uh, i i am very grateful to you yeah <laughs> and the saint said actually that's not a medicine it's just simple water uh, like simple water <laughs> there's no medicine there actually medicine that i suggested to you is silence don't mm. shout mm -hmm. when you become angry let the emotion not become an expression mm. anger is on the mind plane emotional plane when it becomes verbal expression when the emotion of anger is expressed through words then it comes in the form of abusive language mm shouting exaggerated aggressive kind of speech mm. so at that time if you try to control one speech regret one's expression by giving a pause then you allow the person to calm down little bit that's all mm -hmm. so okay. how we can uh, try to empathize with the other people and not uh, not immediately uh, respond with with uh, uh, with our abusive words so that can be one uh, way of looking at it one more thing is श्रीमद् भागवतम से निंदनस्तव सत्कार न्यक्कारार्थम कलेवरम दिस कलेवर दिस बॉडी दिस ह्यूमन लाइफ इज मेंट फॉर एक्सपीरियंसिंग निंदनस्तव क्रिटिसिज्म एंड प्रेज सत्कार न्यक्कार इंसल्ट एंड ऑनर ओ मेंट टू एक्सपीरियंस ऑल दैट वी आर मेंट टू एक्सपीरियंस हैप्पीनेस एंड डिस्ट्रेस वी आर मेंट टू एक्सपीरियंस हीट एंड कोल्ड रियलिटीज आर अ कॉमन थीम इन दिस एंटायर क्रिएशन Hmm. therefore we need to tolerate 
That's what Krishna said. One of the first teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Matra sparshas tu kaunti ya sitoshna sukha dukha daha. Aga mapa ino nitya hatamsti tikshasva bharata. Krishna said, Sukha dukha, sita ushna. Sita mm. ushna, heat and cold. Sukha dukha means happiness and distress. Just as heat and cold come due to summer and winter seasons, happiness and distress also comes as a result of our own past good and bad deeds. Mm. You, you ought to tolerate this and you are also meant to tolerate this. The external dualities of heat and cold, we try to uh, tolerate. Mm. But, uh, inner dualities of happiness and distress, we often cannot tolerate. So she learned the art of tolerance. Okay. But I think it's a long discussion. Please uh, go ahead if you have any other questions. Does it... Uh, yeah, yeah. That, is the question? Uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense what you said. You know, many times... When we are angry, we often say things which we don't mean. Mm -hmm. And also, I think not only do we say things we don't mean, the tone in which we say because of anger, that also, like, if the words are, like, uh, taking it to 2x, then the tone takes it to, like, you know, 10x. And that's why uh, the other person feels that uh, I am humiliated because of this person's insult. So that's a very good story that you said, you know, just by uh, keeping mum and by not saying like the problems are resolved. So now uh, I would very much love to hear from you what happened when Dhruva Maharaj went to the forest and uh, how did he transform himself? <laughs> when he went to the forest, he met a great sage named Narada Muni. Initially, Narada Muni tested his determination. Mm. And he said, my dear child, five-year-old boy, why are you here in the forest? You're mm. supposed to be playing at home. Mm. You look like a prince. You must be playing in your royal palace. What are you doing in this uh, uh, ferocious jungle? There are so many ferocious animals here. Lions and tigers are here. Mm. So you should please go back home. Then this boy said, Dhruva said, uh, my stepmother has insulted me. My heart is so pained, wounded by her words. She did not allow me to sit on my father's lap. I want to sit in a position which is superior to my great-grandfather Brahma. Oh, sage Narada Muni, can you please tell me some means to achieve it? Mm. Then Narada Muni said, oh, you want to worship Lord Vishnu? <laughs> you have come here to worship Lord Vishnu? Now I understand. But it's very difficult. Mm. Long conversation between both of them. Essentially, Narada Muni initially disgraced Dhruva. Okay. Why did he disgrace? That so-called discouragement is only to test his determination. Mm. You okay. cannot do it. That's what he said. Mm. Okay. If I say I cannot, he cannot do it, will he go back or will he say I want to do it? Oh. Ah, okay. wanted to test it. Okay. Test mm -hmm. The determination of Dhruva. Then Dhruvara said, no, no, no. Although it is difficult, although I'm a five-year-old boy and although this is a jungle, still... I must worship Lord Vishnu and I must attain the fulfillment of my desires. You are a great sage. You should tell me how to do it. You should guide me in attaining, in attaining my desires. Then Narada Muni guided him. You should go to the forest called Madhuvan. On the bank of Yamuna, you start chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. You meditate on Lord Vishnu and, and the Lord will come and fulfill your desires. So mm. Dhruva went, he did some tapasya for six months. Mm. Eventually, Lord Vishnu appeared in front of him and gave him whatever boons he wanted. Actually, Dhruva Maharaj uh, became very regretful. Ah, okay. After doing bhakti for six months, after chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya for six months, mm. there was a transformation in the heart of Dhruva. Mm. The revengeful attitude that he had towards his stepmother Suruchi was completely nullified. The envious feelings that he had towards his stepbrother Uttam yeah. completely vanquished. Mm. The ambitious desire, material desire that he had to occupy a position superior to his great-grandfather Brahma was completely vanquished and he felt very embarrassed and awkward and, and felt very bad uh, and felt very guilty for holding such kind of desires within his heart. Hmm. Mother Correct. told me not to desire harm for others, but I did. My hmm. mother told me to understand whatever insults I am facing is only because of uh, 
because of um, uh, my own past mistakes. I could never understand this philosophy. I unnecessarily hosted all kinds of negative feelings in my heart. So by practicing bhakti, by chanting Om Namah Bhagavati Vasudevaya, by worshipping Lord Vishnu, by replacing all the negative emotions and feelings that he had with positive emotions and feelings and devotional feelings towards the Lord, Dhruva experienced a great transformation. When Lord Vishnu came in front of him, Dhruva never asked any of the desires that he wanted before. Yes. All he asked was, Oh Lord, I just want the opportunity to hear your glories in the association of your devotees and this be in a constant mood of uh, mood of your devotee. Mm. Let you constantly experience that love and affection coming from you by discussing about you with devotees who are devoted to you. So mm. that will make my life successful. He just wanted to hear about the Lord uh, continuously. That's a spiritual experience. He was aspiring for that spiritual experience, not the experience of being in a high position materially. And Prabhuji, like many times people who are hearing this for the first time, they may think, okay, he did worship of Lord Vishnu, but what's so special? I mean, how did it happen that he worshipped Lord Vishnu and he appeared and suddenly, and not suddenly, over the course of the six months of his tapasya, somebody may wonder, what led to this transformation? What is there in Bhakti that led to this finally so that it can also happen to me? So what is there in it? <laughs> Whatever we do in this world, we do for happiness, mm. pleasure, satisfaction, genuine right. satisfaction, isn't it? Yes. Whether we're eating or sleeping or interacting with other people on a friendly note or when we're working to earn money uh, or, or watching a video or, or doing business or whatever it may be. We are all looking for pleasure. Correct. By nature, all the living beings are anandamayo bhyasat. Mm. Pleasure-seeking entities. Correct. Any living being is a pleasure-seeking entity. Correct. We seek pleasure. But the greatest pleasure of a living being is in bhakti. Mm. In the first kind of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a beautiful shloka that says, Ahaituki uh, apratihata yayatma suprasidati. Savai pumsampa ro dharmo yato bhakti radhokshajing. Ahaituki apratihata yayatma suprasidati. The supreme beauty. Or, or the natural intrinsic characteristic of any living being is to render unalloyed devotional service unto Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna. And that service is done without any material motivations or selfish desires and without any interruptions or inconsistencies or breaks. And such unmotivated, uninterrupted, selfless, seamless, causeless, ceaseless bhakti. Mm. Completely satisfies the heart. Ye atma suprasidati. Mm, okay. Mm. We are all spiritual beings. When we identify ourselves with this material body, all the material sense objects that please our material senses give us satisfaction. Mm. But when we start identifying ourselves as spirit souls, yeah. as amshas of God, as parts of God, as eternal lovers and servants of God, then what pleases us is service to God, love mm. of God. And Dhruva stopped identifying himself as a prince, as a betrayed prince, as an insulted prince, as a dishonored prince. He start, started identifying himself as a lover of God, a servant of God, a child of God. And he started taking pleasure in his relationship with God. And because he's experiencing that spiritual pleasure in his re relationship with God, he gave up any taste for the other material fleeting transient pleasures in being in high position or taking revenge on somebody, etc. etc. Okay. So it fills our heart with spiritual happiness that we become indifferent to material happiness. Okay, so because he became happy inherently, spiritually, his heart got filled. So that is why his materialistic anger, hatred, envy, that kind of disappeared. Mm. 
Yes. And I also remember a long time back in your Instagram, I saw this like one or two years back and I, I was very fascinated with this, what you said. Maybe this is the last thing I would request you to share. You said, uh, whenever we are envious of somebody, we have to see, uh, do we hate that person? And you also said, if we hate, we need to ask ourselves that are we envious of that person? So could you please <laughs> like explain this envy? Yeah. I was saying, uh, I was saying that before labeling another person as an envious person, we need to check within our hearts whether we are proud. Yeah. Is it because of my pride that I am perceiving envy in the other person? Okay. Because when I am proud, when I am proud of my position, when I feel I am so great, I may perceive others are envious of me. Okay. Because I'm already, I already have an inflated conception about myself. Oh. I'm so great. Mm. And I think so these people are envious of my position. They may not have. Oh, okay. But I'm perceiving it. They may have. That's a different issue. But even if they don't have envy, I may think they're envious when I'm proud. Okay. 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 So what I was saying at that time was, before labeling another person as envious, check if you have any pride in your heart. Oh. And before labeling other person as proud, check if you have an envy in your heart. <laughs> Opposite thing. Okay. Other person is maybe very great, very great. He's a great singer or a great speaker or a great uh, author or great uh, manager uh, or great orator, whatever it may be, great podcaster. <laughs> right? He may be great in some way. Uh, now I'm a, I'm a little uncomfortable with his greatness. Mm. I'm feeling envious. I'm feeling very jealous of him. Mm -hmm. Then I start looking at him and I say, he's very proud. It's not his pride, your envy. Because of my envy, I am perceiving pride in that person. Okay. okay. So in short, if I have envy within me, I may perceive pride in others. If I have pride in me, I may perceive envy in others. Oh. Or to put it in another way, before labeling others as envious, check if you have any pride within your heart. And before labeling other people as proud, Check if you have any uh, envy in your heart. Mm. This is like very beautiful that you explained, uh, not because of the reasons, but what is very beautiful about your explanation is that you, whenever you are saying, if you feel this, check within yourself. If you feel this, check. If you feel this, check. So this is, I think this is the beauty of the Vedic tradition. Uh, compared to the modern tradition, modern day culture, this is very incredible that Modern culture teaches, okay, there's some problem, somebody else is responsible. You know, your father, mother, government, <laughs> God, your karma, your astrology, your horoscope, your husband, wife. But Vedic culture always teaches us if there's a problem, like even Dhruva Maharaj's mother, uh, Suniti said, this is happening because of your past life, bad karma. So don't harbor malice against your stepbrother and your stepmother and your father. So again, she's trying to give that angle that, you know, somewhere you must have done something wrong. It is because of you. And now also the same thing you are saying, whenever we feel somebody is envious of us or somebody is proud, we need to check within ourselves. Do we hate that person? Do we, uh, do we have an inflated uh, sense of self? So because of that, then if we have this attitude that whenever something goes crazy outside whenever something goes like uh, completely unexpected we always ask ourselves maybe there if if is there some problem in me because of which i am perceiving like this if not then everything will everything will appear normal but if we have that inflated sense of self then everything will appear exaggerated even if somebody uh, says one small thing we will feel very insulted and even if somebody praises us this much we will feel that person is praising us a lot you know so the good will appear exaggerated and the bad will also appear exaggerated so this is the beauty of what you are explaining uh, apart from the technical uh, the... Uh, basically we need to take responsibility for our actions and their consequences hmm Okay. Whenever there is a problem, generally an average human being tends to point out the cause of the problem outside oneself. Okay. 
I never worked for suffering. I never desired suffering. Why am I suffering? Because of him, because of her. Yeah. So yes. the, an average being points out, average living being points out the cause of one's suffering outside oneself, not within oneself. Ah, uh, okay. But, but several episodes in our scriptures teach us to take responsibility for one's actions and the reactions. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think this is primarily the Vedic ethos. No, one side is, you know, your karma is there. You know, even if you are perfect now, but you might have done something in your previous lifetime. Or it could be you might have not done in your previous lifetimes, but in this lifetime you have done some wrong activity and you get a curse immediately, you know, by some sage or somebody. <clears throat> uh, but at the end, the uh, ethos is like, you know, uh, look deep within yourself. Is there some problem in you? Like, I think Krishna also says this to Arjuna, no, that a great soul has no enemies in the Bhagavad Gita, he says. Uh, but at the same time, he's telling, you know, go and fight. So, Krishna is telling him that uh, as as a soul, you should not harbor animosity you know, as an Atma, as a person. But as a Chatriya, you might have to fight. That is different. You know, that's like your Chatriya duty. Uh, but yeah, as a person, you should not harbor malice against anybody. So, yes, Prabhuji, thank you so much for uh, all this uh, that you shared. It has been uh, incredible for me to uh, hear uh, about Dhruva Maharaj. And I'm sure uh, everybody, anybody who heard this, uh, they got a very good idea about uh, how to progress uh, in your life if, you know, time to time somebody is insulting you, which, which will happen inevitably. As you said, uh, the Bhagavatam says this body is meant for... Uh, insult and praise <laughs> so both the things will keep happening as per our own karma sometimes we will get insulted sometimes we will get praised uh, but within that the most important thing the crux of today's discussion is that when Dhruva Maharaj had all this poison inside him because of his stepmother's insult and because of his father's negligence he went and he uh, got the association of a great soul like Narad Muni so that means for us, if something similar happens, we should try to take association of somebody who is very elevated spiritually and learn from them and also chant our mantras, our prescribe rounds regularly, like he chanted Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And also uh, do worship of God in a way that we get spiritual happiness, spiritual fulfillment. Uh, whichever tradition you are connected to, whichever religion you identify yourself with, whatever inspires you and by that your heart becomes filled with happiness and then you uh, then you understand that all other things are superficial and they don't matter uh, is my conclusion correct Prabhuji? Perfect. Thank, you. thank you very much okay i will now close the recording so viewers please uh, give your good wishes and blessings to gorang darshan prabhu and uh, please write what you liked in the comments and please write what would you like to hear from him the next time? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you.